We're on Coda and we're in the lower bracket this time. And our first player up here on the left is Outset Gaming's Red Protoss Sin Prime. And in the bottom right hand corner of the fantastic map that is Coda, it's a uh, it's a clan war here, boys. Representing Outset Gamma, currently getting cheese. It is Komotiazzo. Yes, indeedy. And uh, looks like Sin Prime is going full on cheese. Actually, I think Komotiaz is going to see this with his overlord. You That's know, pretty bad you know, news. Something tells me Komotiaz's overlords are pretty good at seeing stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're not bad. They are. Uh, oh. oh, dear. Oh, dear. Komotiaz, is it's, this is like the perfect time. Like he can he can actually just start harassing it. He can start, yeah. Oh, this is pretty nice by Sim Prime. He's going to wall in that pylon. Makes it a bit more difficult, but yeah. That's uh, that's not great news there. Komotiaz is going to just be perfectly positioned with this. Um, he's actually going to focus down one of the gateways. I'm not sure if this is like the best idea or not. I think he'd be fine just getting some spine crawlers and letting the zealots walk into them. Yeah, he's got a spawning pool on the way, like you said, though. Uh, he's already pulled drones, and it's this decision of, do I pull drones and, you know, take out that gateway? One's going to finish, and a zealot's going to be warped in, and he's just oh, going to make another one. And he can cancel that at any time and, and recoup some of that um, hmm. investment that he made in minerals. So, it's uh, like you said, outside gaming's Komotiatsu, maybe not making the best decision with the drone pool there, and Sin Prime kind of knowing exactly what he needs to do. Oh, he's going to let the gateway finish, actually. Yeah, I don't think he can get a uh, zealot out of it, but... Uh, one zealot will finish from this one, and Komotiazo won't be able to actually keep on attacking this gateway. He loses one probe. Two, oh my god. Uh, yeah, two drones doing it, and the gateway finishes. If the pylon was exposed, I think it's the right decision to pull drones, but without that, the actually, actually only one spine crawler as well. Because he had drones pulled, he could only afford one spine crawler, and that's going to be pretty easy for Sim Prime to deal with. It's already a few swipes, he's already gotten it down to pretty low health. And it's not even finished yet. It can't fight back. The two zealots in now. Uh, these lings aren't gonna be able to do too much about it. Um, and he's gonna he's got a good surround here, but the lings fall so so rapidly, the queen only just gets into it. Now with the spine crawler coming in, Common has only got five drones left. Yeah, five drones to of course send primes fifteen. Um and he's got three gateways up. Normally this is a two gateway, but he built the other one uh, I think in reserve. The other one went down. Instead, he's just gonna go ahead and go, gone forward with three gateways. It's kind of at this point, why not? Uh, he's doubling his uh, opponent's supply, and some tells me this is not how Komotiatsu saw this one going from the get go. No, I don't think this is exactly what Komotiatsu wanted to happen this game. Uh, the spine crawler is, I mean, it's great and all, but it's gonna be focused down. Actually, yeah, it does stay alive for a little while. Oh, learning from the best, learning from Jadong's spine crawler micro trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, Comanchezo is going to have a transfuse to that spine crawler soonish, sort of. Uh, and should actually be able to fight pretty cost efficiently against this uh, Zealot Queen, kiting it back. But he kind of needs to fight in range of that spine crawler. That's his actual one advantage right now. And having spent another drone to build another spine crawler, he's not in good stead. However, the uh, whoa, Zealot just arrived. And yeah, there's the transfuse down in the spine crawler. And uh, takes out one more Zealot. And then he can just. Sit back and range the spine crawler. Now the thing is, uh, Sim Prime can actually just get up a bunch of zealots and contain Kamatiazo on one base pretty happily while he takes the rest of the map. And I think that's the move here. If Sim Prime just builds zealots one by one. They're gonna go into the spine crawler and just get taken out. But I don't know. Yeah, this is kind of a stalemate at this time. Komotiatsu, I mean, that's the best I think he could hope for, is forcing a little bit of a stalemate. Uh, eventually, Sin Prime's going to build up a bit of a head of steam here. Uh, the two gate didn't end him outright, but it basically did what it was supposed to do. Uh, four zealots now on the map, too, about to die. But, I mean, the spine crawlers are in about as perfect a position as you could to protect the mineral line, but everything else, I mean, aside from maybe the hatchery seems to be in range. Ling's getting on top of these oh, four man. zealots here. It might be able to focus down that spine crawler, and that actually has to micro back and get out of the range. If he loses the queen, you safe to say it's GG. Down goes the uh. queen. This next spine crawler doing work, but the other one's about to die. He actually has to unburrow and micro that one back. What else is there to defend here? Just these two spine crawlers, and it looks like that's that's pretty much about it. Trick and all, I can't really say much else about that. Yeah, some nice hold position mic on these drones, but as Sim Prime actually starts focusing the drones down, there's only four of them left now. And uh, these elves back on up, but again, four drones is all Common Tiazo has, and Sin Prime back at home, still got ten drones, still producing delts three at a time, and these three results can come back in and swipe away at the drones, swipe away at the spine crawler. They 
they can hit anything they want to right now, and it'll be a good idea, basically. Yeah, this is just perpetual ze uh, ze zealots coming in here on these drones. Uh, honestly, if I was Sim Prime, I'd probably save up a bit of a head of steam here. Kowanti Teatza is doing literally nothing, down to three drones, two drones now, and that's GG called. Outset Gaming, Sin Prime, killing off his uh, opponent here in the first game. It's his own teammate in Kowanti mm -hmm. with a cheeky little two gate there. Transformed into a three gate by hiding that pylon behind uh, those two warp gates they're tricking off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, it's Iron Fortress. It's game two of the losers match of this Group D Vanguard League ASL action for you here tonight. Once again, I'm Tyrannus, joined by Trigonal, and we'll get right into these player introductions. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Iron Fortress, representing Outside Gaming, currently down one game to zero, is the Orange Zerg player, Komatiato. And his opponent bring out a number of formidable cheeses tonight. What will he bring to the table this time? It is Outset Gaming's Blue Protoss Sin Prime. Damn. That was pretty good. You know, I think I think uh, if we had a caster duo that related to us in uh, in the movie culture, do you remember episode one, Star Wars? The uh, yeah. the uh, pod race scene? Yeah, yeah. You know the uh, the announcers oh, that the, were the, 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 announcers? The, the Siamese twin announcers? <laughs> <laughs> the aliens? That's what uh, that's, that's just something I'm guessing. Kong has uh, got a, a pretty... Right? Come on now. Yeah. Come on. That's some love. That's some love yeah. coming across the aisle here. So, uh, Kong Tiazza's drone is scouting. Uh, early scout from him as well. He actually scouted the entire opposite side of the map just to make sure that uh, Sim Prime's not pulling anything funky. And uh, right now, it's looking fairly standard, except for... Uh, no, fairly standard. I thought that probe dropped something, but, uh, you know, about as standard as you can imagine, not a Sim Prime, I suppose. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, not like super economical. Uh, we're not seeing any fast Nexus and of course the Cybercore before uh, the Nexus does go down. So I think I think sometimes still going to put on some aggression, maybe like a two base four gate or something like that. Um, but we'll see. There's lots of time still to tell. Um, but yeah, Iron Fortress is a bit of an interesting map. The third base is obviously really, really far away. So it can be difficult to hop between them to actually defend them if you're being pressured at the third base and the natural and i feel like initially that's going to benefit sim prime if, if he does go for any kind of you know just small two base aggression but as the game goes on as we get into like more roach hydra ball sort of style if that's what comedy has goes for it goes pretty well for him i feel yeah so what's the, what's your um your thought on this map so when when i uh take my third in this map I take it actually towards the enemy because Terran, I'm yes, trying to keep Terran. my units flowing across the map, right? <laughs> I attack the same place I yeah. defend. That makes sense for me. Um, so as a Zerg player, especially against a Protoss player, are you taking the third off to the side or are you taking the third straight on? Uh, off to the side. Definitely, I don't want to be expanding towards my opponent. My as a Zerg, like the units are fast enough that the rush distance isn't like the biggest deal. You can take it towards it, but it's a big commitment to being like aggressive, really aggressive. Um, if you don't manage to actually pull off some uh, really, really solid uh, solid pushes, then the counter swing is going to be doing big damage to you. Taking out, obviously, losing a base as Zerg is a big deal because not only do you lose the production, or not only do you lose the econ, but you lose the production as well. Uh, so it's it's pretty painful as a Zerg player when you actually do lose one of those hatches that you are using as a mining base as well. But for now, Sin Prime, of course, does have his Nexus up, getting. Uh, He's just sticking on one gas, actually. So, with a fast robotics facility and the forge, I think this is going to be a big ol' uh, zealot immortal all in. Yeah, I mean, we've we've seen this uh, this build you and I casting all the time, and yeah. you know we're always we're always going between are they going to throw in immortals? You know, the warp prism's coming out of the robo bay instead of uh, mm. um, of the uh, an immortal coming out now. So. You know, just a bunch of zealots, a bunch of uh, sentries, and it turns out that Protoss can get a lot done with that, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, Komachiatsu is throwing in his Overlord here, not sacrificing it because there's no stalkers in range to get it. He's going to get as good a scout as he can, and he actually might see the Warp Prism if uh, if it crosses past them. He's actually trying to disguise that. Sin Prime is going to hide that in the corner um, fairly well. And then the Immortal is coming out, so it is going to be a bit of more of an Immortal uh, Sentry blend, which is more the, more the style these days, I, I, I believe. 
Um, but that Overlord, like I said, it's a good guy to throw in there right at the six, seven minute mark just to see what's mm -hmm. going on. Because if you think about all the techs that can kill me right now in the next two minutes, Banshees if you're against Terran, Bl or uh, Blink if you're against Protoss, you know, DTs, all those things, they typically occur around the five to, to seven minute mark. So yeah. good job on Komachiatsu, making sure he's keeping his mechanics up and getting that Overlord in there for the scout. Yeah, it's exactly the right timing for the scout, but unfortunately, uh, Sin Prime is good. He delays throwing down these gates until the Overlord's kind of left the vision. Uh, the Overlord doesn't actually spot the Robo, so this is going to put Kamatiazu in a bit of a sticky situation. Although he does know that there's uh, only one gas, this narrows it down to basically this build or a 7 gate. And so Kamatiazu knows there is some big aggression coming his way. He's getting, he's going for a Borrow Roach play, which I actually don't know how this matches up against the uh, Immortal Zella. Because I've never seen and I've never seen that those two particular builds clash. But either way, Kamatiazu is going to be getting a ton of units. And that's what he's going to need against this. Uh, he's going to need to kind of crush this first attack. I mean, force fields are uh, kind of negated when you've got things that go underneath them. There won't be any force so... fields there. Oh, actually, maybe there will be. Sin Prime's actually taking the three, it's three extra gases. So he could uh, add on some more expensive gas units. Usually you just go with like literally immortals and zealots and that's like it. Maybe like one century. But for now, it's just going to be immortal drops. Yeah, pretty nifty play. The Warp Prism coming down with two Immortals down here. And of course, they're going to be able to get a lot of damage done should the uh, Micro be intensive. And he's actually warping in a lot of Zealots as well. So Zealots mm -hmm. coming in here at the same time uh, with these two Immortals be able to do a lot against just Ling and uh, Roach here coming in. Ling's getting on top of the Zealots, but there's a lot of Zealots now that we see it. And these two Immortals, of course, doing what Immortals do, and that's never die. The Warp Prism just, just doing its thing and coming around and oh. now he's able to micro these immortals back into it. The roaches are falling really quickly because the zealots get on top of them. They have to take out the zealots and first and foremost, the immortals and more zealots getting warped in here. I don't know about this, Trigon also looking pretty hairy for a Zerg player. It's looking not good at all for Comet Are Losing those two queens with like the full energy. A really, really bad news there. Uh, trying to get down that immortal, but the warp prism actually is on very low health. He may not want to load the immortal into it, but with no queens, I don't think Comet has any queens on the map. He has nothing to stop this warp prism just warping in units and units and units. And Comet barely has any roaches left. And those plus one immortals just destroy roaches. And man, look at how many roaches now he's able to pop out, even though it's pales in comparison to the number of zealots and immortals he's about to face. But had this hit probably 30 seconds, not even maybe 15 seconds later, and all the upgrades, speed, tunneling claws, all that kicking into gear, Cohen Chatsu holds this 9 out of 9, doesn't he? 9 out of 10, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, he might even feel magic. He has to managed to take out one of those immortals. Uh, a little bit late in his micro with Sin Prime, but he's still just doing his best he can. However, the lair's oh. gone down. Not the production of that base, of course. Uh, oh, and he's going to get the second immortal, though. Uh, yeah, just just managed to get it. And uh, Stalker's not so effective against Roaches. They can obviously borrow and regen health as well, which helps out a little. And yeah, there we go. Coming in again. These Stalkers, I don't think, are really the right choice against the Roaches. I mean, it, they're, they're not. They can. They can't be kited like the Zealots can. But on the other hand, they do just do so little damage to the Roaches. And the uh, now with the Observer coming out as well, Observer. the Borrow is going to be largely negated. And uh, we'll see how well these roaches can do. Uh, he's going to burrow and try and run away. But yeah, as I said, that burrow, it's much less powerful when they can actually see you and still fire at you when you're running away. But uh, Comantiazo is doing everything he can. The roach one being taken out, though, reduced him to just lings. And with no speed, lings are not good against plus one zealots. Yeah, this is looking like the end of Comantiazo. Unfortunately, uh, if he loses this game, he's out of the tournament. So he's going to do as much as he can. And you know, nobody's faulting them for that. You want to stay in as long as you can in the tournament. And uh, the Roach is doing what they can. But of course, the War Prism can even pick up uh, Stalkers if they don't have Blink. And that's what they're doing now. Sporecaller has taken out the Observer. So no more uh, detection for our Protoss player. But that's it. I still love you. Coming from Sim Prime, the offensive player. A little bit of BM oh. there never hurts. Uh, Tyrannus Vikings, of course, uh, on my own end. I know I suffer from it <laughs> as well. Uh, but now the drones going to the slaughter. Uh, dying for the motherland. Not much else you can do here. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, technological might of Protoss has uh, taken out the biological adaptation of the Zerg race. And uh, at this point, Komatiatsu on his last leg, three roaches left against this many stalkers is never a good thing to see. And it's going to be GG here pretty soon. Yeah, it is. He's got just that one drone left, definitely mining as much gas as he can. But the second roach war on falls, uh, and it is clean up duty for Sin Prime. Komatiatsu, GG well played, and he will fall. Tough, tough, two tough games. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to support the ASL by hitting the button now.